believe that there are some keys to getting prayers answered in the spirit. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you are tired of prayers being unanswered, you need to pay attention to what I'm preaching to you tonight because I'm going to give you something that gives you a key on how to get prayers answered from God. There was a very powerful prophet that lived back in the 50s and 60s, died way too young. His name was Verbal Bean. He was a very powerful man of God. He was a man of prayer. He, he was a powerful man of prayer. He said there were two types of prayers that God answers. He said there are two types of praying that will get God's attention. He said the first type of prayer that God answers is a memorial prayer. It's something that you pray about over and over and over and then God answers it. He said like Cornelius when he prayed so many times that the angel of the Lord said your prayer and your giving has come up as a memorial before God. He said it was like like this he said if a man wanted to buy a suit but could not afford the suit he would go into the suit store with the money he had and put the suit on layaway with the funds that he had next time he got paid he would put some more funds down on the suit he would not leave with the suit he would leave without the suit each time he went in to make a payment but the more payments he made on the suit when he could make them there would become a day when he would finally pay off the suit and when the last payment was made, he could take what he had been paying for home with him. He said, that's how it is in your prayer life. You can be praying about something over and over and over and not take the answer home. If you keep praying and you keep believing, there's going to come a day when you bring the answer home with you because you've paid it in full. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. What a great service we had last night and continuing forward tonight. Looking forward to what God has in store for us. And I give honor to Pastor Wolf. And don't you love the man of God? Appreciate Sister Wolf also. I think I could have very possibly gained 15 pounds before service tonight when Sister Wolf cooked. So I, uh, very sluggish so it was I've never had green beans like that in my entire life she wrapped them in bacon and poured French dressing on them oh like little bundles of you know I said anyone ever ask me if I want green beans again I'm gonna say are they wrapped in bacon and do they have French dressing if you say yes then I'll have them no then no thanks but I love them very, very much. Love my beautiful wife, Janae. We're so glad to be here. So good to have my friend Brother Lawson here tonight and looking forward to uh, connecting with him in the future. God has great things in store for this service tonight. And I really feel the Holy Ghost. John chapter 9, if you have your Bibles. John chapter 9, verse 1 through verse number 7. Praise the Lord. Great, great crowd for a Thursday night service. Praise the Lord. John chapter 9, verse number 1. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle. He anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Verse 7, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. I want to preach on the subject tonight. You're in the middle of a miracle. You're in the middle of a miracle. In fact, look at your neighbor and tell him, you're in the middle of a miracle right now. Jesus, loose your authority and your power and your dominion in this house tonight. Change the atmosphere right now. I pray for miracles, signs, and wonders to break loose. Let there be faith like never before in this place. You can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask. Or even think, you're God on good days, you're God on bad days. You hear us praying on Sunday morning and Sunday night, 
and you hear us praying on Thursday night. You can loose power in this place right now. You can loose angels in this house right now and change any situation going on inside or outside this building. I pray tonight for the power of God to loose in this place. Somebody clap those hands right now. God, have your way. Have your way in the name of the Lord Jesus. We're here unified for what you want to do in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, you may be seated. Some of you, when you made that statement to your neighbor, you're in the middle of a miracle right now, your neighbor immediately took himself out of this message and said, that's not me, not tonight, this is for somebody else, I clearly am not in the middle of a miracle. If the preacher or you only knew what I was going through, you would definitely say I am not in the middle of a miracle. If I were to, in fact, I will ask you, who needs a miracle tonight? Would you raise your hand? Look at all the hands across the building. If I were to ask you, and I will, I guess, um, if, if you've ever had a miracle, raise your hand. You see, we know when we need one. And we know when we've had one. But we're not always sure when we're in one. It's very easy to identify when you need a miracle. The doctor report comes back, you need healing, I need a miracle. The boss says you're fired, I need a miracle. The the divorce is is getting finalized, I need a miracle. The kids are getting worse, I need a miracle. Everybody knows you can identify the need right now and say, I do need God to fix that. Everybody knows when God has come through. When you see the walls fall, when you get the report that you're healed, when you see the change, when you're filled with, with the Holy Ghost, and God has given you a miracle. You say, God gave me a miracle. You testify about it. But not everybody knows when they're in the middle of one. Because when you're in the middle of a miracle, not every time can you see it, not every time do you feel it, and not every time do you hear about it. But I've come to preach something tonight that's going to shock some of you who think God does not care, and God does not see, and God does not know what you're going through right now, that God actually has every single detail in your situation lined up with his power. And if you give him a few minutes, I guarantee you, you could see yourself in the middle of his will right now. First thing you've got to understand, the Bible said in this story, this man was blind sitting there. And the people, the disciples looked at him and said, who sinned that he was born blind? In other words, the first sign, you're in the middle of a miracle. People will be talking bad about you. First key, that God's about to do something. People around you will be talking about you. Church people started talking about the man in need of a miracle because they saw him suffering. There are two places in your life you are guaranteed you're going to be talked about when you're suffering or when you're celebrating guarantee you no one may say a word about you when you're going through a normal day normal routine but if you are suffering or you are celebrating expect somebody to be talking in church out of church the devil doesn't like it when you're celebrating and people don't like it when you're suffering and they said man somebody must have messed up because he's blind either his mom messed up or his dad messed up or he messed up but he's cursed because when people see you on the ground they assume you've always been on the ground if i first walk down the street and you see a man with a a sign that says homeless will work for food your mind naturally thinks this man has been homeless he is he does not have a job he does not have anything going he's always lived like that why because when you see someone on the bottom you assume they've always been on the bottom and they meet this man at the lowest point of his life and they immediately start talking about him amazing the lack of mercy The disciples had on somebody who needed a miracle, was in the process of getting it, could not see it, did not know it was there. But the church said, I wonder what he did wrong. I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, there are some people... Well, I've been preaching all over America. They come to the altar, and I will watch, and I will hear conversations after church. And someone will walk up, and they will weep, and they'll raise their hands, and they'll f- tears will flow down, and and you'll feel you can see God touching them. And right after church, someone say, "I wonder what they were crying about. They must have done something." 
I'm serious. They never go to the altar like that. They must be doing something wrong. Why? Because we assume when they're broken, there is a cause for them being broken. And it must be something they did to stir up this brokenness. And so they say he must have messed up or somebody messed up and that's why he's the way he is. Don't you agree, Lord? And God said, I don't agree with that at all. Sometimes we try to persuade God and convince God that we're right and they're that way and he's that way and she's that way because they deserve to be that. They suffered. They did something to deserve that. And the Lord said, no, they're in the middle of a miracle right now. You just don't know about it. And here's this other shocker. God will put you in the middle of a miracle and not tell everybody around you about it either. The hardest thing to do is to convince somebody you're in the middle of a miracle when they look and they know your life. And they say, right. You call, have, you ever, have you ever had some, something you were excited about and you called somebody and you were enthusiastic and you told them the news and they kind of deflated the balloon? Hey, this happened, this happened. Oh, really? Well, probably it wasn't real. Twelve got the Holy Ghost. Are you sure? Yes. But they, they immediately were talking back. So Jesus goes to him. Now, here, think about this. He has no clue. He is about to have an encounter with the creator of the world. God is right beside him. The church is right beside him. The people are talking about him. He's sitting there and Jesus comes up. And Jesus could walk to him, speak to him, heal him. He could say, open your eyes and be healed. Like he said, Lazarus, come forth. Like he raised the dead girl. He could do anything in one moment. He could speak. He could breathe on him. And he could have been healed instantly. But the Lord showing us the pattern of the miraculous, rather than touch him, rather than speak to him, rather than do anything for him, spits on the ground you got to see this because before God deals with the man God deals with the dirt around the man when God gets ready to give you a miracle he'll deal with your dirt oh I'm gonna preach this now pull your toes back we think services last night where God moved so strong and we dealt with some dirt are just us coming to the altar and getting renewed but in this story it's how God sets up the miraculous you let me deal with your dirt I'll deal with your situation you oh yes you let me deal with what you're sitting in what's surrounding you what's saturating your life and I'll fix the thing wrong in your life so many people on the edge of a miracle do not get it because they won't let God fix one thing that they know needs fixed. God, you can deal with this, you can deal with that, you can deal with this, you can deal with that. This is off limits. Preacher, preach about that all you want. Preach about this all you want. Preach about that all you want. I'll, I'll shout about this, but you go there. walls up why because we want the miracle but we don't got to deal with the dirt and the Lord said before I ever touch him I'm gonna I'm gonna involve myself with what's around him one of the biggest thing the devil fears is when you let God fix the things in your life that are not involved with your miracle for instance if you needed physical healing in your body like this man did that would, that would seemingly be the most important need in your life that God could touch. And that was what you would bring to God. But God might be interested in something you're struggling with. And say, if you let me fix what you're struggling with, I'll speak to what you're needing in your body. But sometimes we say, no, that's not about God, you know this is what I need right now. In fact, when you said earlier, I need a miracle, your mind went to something specific that probably did not involve your struggle. Maybe it involved a blessing you needed, a financial miracle, or something with your kids, or something in your body, or something on your job. Probably not something involved with your anger. I thought I was preaching good, but maybe not. 
probably not something involved with jealousy or, or the fear thing or the lust thing. Probably not something to do with that. That's just the thorn I've got in the flesh, God. But God said, look, if you let me spit on the dirt, I'll touch the need. But until you let me fix this, I can't touch that. So he spits on the ground. Think about something. First of all, that's disgusting, I think. You need a miracle? <laughs> How bad do you want it? In Mark 8, the Bible said he spit on a blind guy, spit in his eyes. Read it for yourself. Didn't spit on his hand, didn't spit on the ground. Yeah, right there. Pow! What would you do if you needed a miracle? And the Lord said, just come forward and I'll spit in your face. There's someone say, I need it right now. I'd come anyway. And there's somebody say, I'm good. Really didn't need it that bad. I'll deal with the pain. I'll deal with the frustration. Why? Because being spit on is being humiliated. This is not going to look good for this man's dignity. Jesus spits on the ground, then starts to make a sandcastle, starts building clay. Now you're going, I'm in the middle of a miracle, right? I'm surrounded by stuff I can't conquer. I'm sitting in the dirt. I can't see. People are talking about me. And the preacher's telling me, I'm in the middle of a miracle. And then he takes this mud that he somehow makes. I don't know what it looked like. really don't want to see it. Takes the mud and slaps it in the dude's eyes. It's not like he can't see anyway. But you talk about making it worse, taking mud and putting it on a blind guy's eyes. I asked for a miracle, and you gave me a mess. What do you do when you've asked God for this, and God gives you that instead? One time I was looking at cars and said, I need a car. And I was trying to look, look, look. And I was telling God how much I needed a car. And then my tire went flat in my car. So I aired it up, went flat again, went flat again. I was convincing God I need a new car. I got a new tire. We're not on the same page here, Lord. But God was, you're not thankful for what you have now. Why would I give you that? God said, I want to see how you handle a mess, first of all. I know you've got a problem. I know you're sick in your body. I know you've got a need. But let me take this mud and slap it on your eyes and see how you handle it. Have you ever had an unexpected mess to deal with before? Not very many hands. No hands. Wow, I was like, I'm the only one here. I'm just going to preach to myself now. Something come up you didn't expect to come up? And the Lord, the God, I mean, seriously, think about it. You're sitting in the dirt, you're begging for money, you're blind, and all of a sudden, pfft. I'd be going, who, who, who did that? Um, who did that? Why did you do that? I don't need this mess. I, wait, 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 wait. It's strategic where God puts the mess to. He puts it right in his, on his head. What do you do when you've got an unexpected mess in your head everything out here is okay everything up here is frazzled this needs to be done that needs to be done that needs to be taken care of but my mind is a mess if I'm the man I say God why in the world would you let me go through this but you don't see the man complaining you don't see him asking God why you don't sing say who did that why is he saying? Because maybe he felt the hand of his maker behind the mess. And when you feel the hand of God in your situation, it doesn't matter how bad the mess is. If you can feel, oh, I feel like preaching, the hand of God in this thing. If I'm going through a struggle and God's nowhere around, I'm going to get scared. But if I'm going through a struggle and I go to church on a Thursday night and I can still feel the hand of God, even though everything around me is messed up right now, I can make it through because the maker 
leader is behind the mess. Which lets me realize, first of all, that the mud never touches your eyes till it goes through the hands of God. You will never go through a mess that's never been through the hands of God first. It doesn't matter how severe it is. Whatever's attacking your household had to go through God. Satan said, Job will curse you to your face. Let me do this. Let me do that. Let me do this. And God said, he can handle all that. That's fine. In other words, I know what you can handle. I know what you cannot handle. And whatever you can handle, I'll let you go through. And at the end, I'll give you a miracle. But what you can't handle... Why some people can suffer certain things that you never dream of suffering. And there's times you've suffered things others couldn't dream of suffering through. Because God knows what mess you can handle and what mess I can handle and what mess you cannot handle and what mess I cannot go through. And he knew this blind man can handle this mud. You can handle this. Why don't you just say that right now? I can handle this. Say it again. I can handle this. That's what the devil hates to hear. When he has wreaked havoc in your life, and on a Thursday night, when you're stressed out of your mind, you got bills due, anxiety's going crazy, kids are going crazy, you in church say, you know what? I can handle this. I don't know how, I don't know where, but God still... I can handle this. I came in stressed out. I'm leaving stress free because I've made up my mind when I'm in his presence. If I can just feel his touch, no matter what I'm going through, I can handle it. So he puts the mud on his eyes knowing you can handle the mess. And then he says... Um, go wash in the pool of Siloam. He didn't say, let me, let me take you by the hand, Bishop, and lead you to the pool. That's what blows my mind. How does a blind guy find the pool and now he's got mud on top of his blindness and you tell him, go find this pool of water why? Ready? Because God knows what you can handle, and God knows where you can go, and what you can make it to. And so he said, I want to see if not only you can handle the mess, but can you move with the mess? Because some people will move from me and do anything I expect them to as long as things are going good. But when things fall apart, can you keep going forward? I know when your kids are in church and the bills are paid and everything's great that you have no problem being faithful. But what I want to know is when you're not feeling good, you haven't heard from the kids and the bills are overdue, can you still come on Thursday night and can you make your way to the altar and say, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. I don't know how, but God's going to make a way out of no way. He is my provider. He is my strength. He is my healer. And I will worship him. Oh, I want to see. Can you move with a mess? I know you can move if you could see. I have no doubt if you could see, you could find the pool. But sometimes we're like, God, I can't do that. I can't handle this. I've already got all these things going on, and now you want me to do this too. How can I handle all that? You can handle it because I know you can handle it. And the mess is what I'm going to use to take you to the miracle. You see, you really probably wouldn't be desperate to get water on your face if you didn't have mud on your face. Think about it. You probably wouldn't be desperate to get to the water if you didn't think you were dirty. But because the need isn't making you desperate, maybe the feeling 
of the filth will make you desperate. So the blindness doesn't move you, but maybe the mess will move you. And you'll find that well, people that get real miracles get real desperate. People that believe God, people, uh, people that really, 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 really get a major thing from God. There are times when you absolutely are blown away. God comes out of nowhere and does something for you. But then there are times you fight and you claw and you scream and you yell and you pray and you cry and you weep and you suffer and you crawl again. And you say, I don't know how much longer I can take this. But when you get to that pool. The mess went away and the miracle came out and the mess was temporary and the miracle was permanent. What am I saying? What you're going through right now is not going to last forever. But when you make it out of it, the miracle that God's going to give you is going to be there continually. Amazing how sometimes we have no clue what God is doing. I was in Winfield, Louisiana. I'm almost done. I was in Winfield, Louisiana years ago preaching a revival. And I preached Sunday morning, Sunday night, and I believe Monday night, and nothing had happened yet. I mean, I just preached, preached, preached. Couldn't get an amen, nothing. I was considering leaving and quitting preaching ever again and I went to the church on Tuesday afternoon we had church that night and I and I was walking around the sanctuary praying there was a penny on the floor reached down picked up the penny went to put it in my pocket and I heard something I've never heard this is going to shock you ready you're going to say yeah right just listen to the whole story take the penny throw it outside in the parking lot I said, no. That's a devil. <sighs> take the penny, throw it outside in the parking lot. I take the penny, yes, sir. I mean, people were driving by, must have thought I was weird. <sighs> Went back in, kept praying, nothing. Preached that night, nothing. Went back the next day to the church. Walking around praying. See a man ride up on his bicycle in the parking lot. Reach down and pick up that penny. Rides off. Hear the same voice. Go get him. And spiritual evangelist Josh Herring said, No, that's the devil too. I'm not making a fool of myself. Guy rides off. Go get him. Uh uh. I'm, the Lord has to work with me on some things. Ten minutes goes by. I'm, I have the audacity to keep trying to pray after this, okay? <laughs> You're laughing, but it's funny how y'all do that too. We don't do God's will, then we ask God to help us. Okay. <laughs> God says, do that. Talk to them. We act like we don't hear it. And then at church, I need a miracle, Lord. Yeah, they did too. Um, so he rides off. I'm trying to pray for the service, trying to get the mind of God. About 15 minutes later, he comes riding back up on his bicycle. Knocks on the church door. Now I'm listening. I opened the door. He said, are you the pastor? I said, no, I'm not. He said, um, can I talk to you? I said, yeah. My name is Doug. And I'm riding my bicycle from Florida to Washington for a job. Washington State, across the United States. I said, dude, take a Greyhound. That's a long bike ride. He said, can you explain just one thing to me? I said, yeah. He said, I, I was riding this my bike and I saw this penny in the parking lot I picked it up and I rode off and like 10 minutes down the road something said go back to that church right now I said okay he said but this is what I don't understand 
help me, please. I said, okay. He said, two days ago, I'm riding my bike, and I'm in a rainstorm, and it's lightning, so I, I stop. I'm on the side of the road, and the rain is everywhere. And a man pulls up beside me, and he pulls up, and he, he opens his car door, and he hands me a Bible and says, you need to read the book of Acts chapter 2. God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name. He said, okay. He opens his Bible. He said, I looked at it. I looked back up. There was no man and no truck anywhere. He said, but that's not the scary part. He said, yesterday I rode my bike. He said, and I met a lady, and she was talking to me, and we started talking about the Lord, and she said to me, you need to read the book of Acts chapter 2 and get baptized in Jesus' name and get the Holy Ghost. They said, I've passed a bunch of churches. He shot Talamahaya. I've been riding my bike forever. And I, I rode in this parking lot and I saw that penny. And something said, what you've been hearing, I can help you with. Go back to that church. I wasn't even in tune with God. I wasn't being spiritual. But the man was in the middle of a miracle and didn't even know it. I laid hands on him in the parking lot and God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And we baptized him in Jesus' name. And he was knocked out every night of the revival. In the, can I tell you something? It does not matter what I see or do not see around me. It matters will I do what God says. Some of you right now have no clue that God's walking and saying, do this, do that, order your step there, go there, say that, and God the whole time is setting something up. What kind of miracles are you in the middle of right now that God has ordained and orchestrated but has not told you about yet? just been saying go here do that talk to them about me do this tell them how much i love them call them again they haven't been here in a while call them again reach out to them but god i need a blessing and i need to be healed call them call. what happened the rest of the revival it broke loose lots of people got the holy ghost lots of people got healed why because there was miracles we were in the middle of we had no clue we're going on like the lady that I walked up to in Florida in, in Miami and said I'm going to pray that God heals you and she starts rejoicing and she said she's healed and I walked away and she said that's not what I'm here for my son's in a coma do you believe God can heal him he's been in a coma for three months flesh says I don't know let's just pray and see what God does who knows but God spoke out and said when you get to the hospital today there'll be a sign he's coming out of his coma and when she got there he was sitting up in bed talking to her husband she had no clue that when she came to the altar that morning for her little miracle that God was at the hospital touching her child if I will obey what God says to do Some of you, I just feel the Holy Ghost. You've not been baptized in Jesus' name yet. But you're asking God for other stuff. Do what the Word says. Get baptized in His name. You don't have the Holy Ghost. It's been a long time since you prayed through. Go after the Holy Ghost tonight. But I need this. I need a job. I need my friends. That, I need this. I need a relationship. No, you need Jesus. And if you will do what Jesus says, God will. He said, if you will seek the kingdom of God first. If you will do what God says to do first, you'll find yourself in the middle of a miracle. What am I saying? I think things are going on right now in this church that we don't have any clue about. I think backsliders are on the verge of coming back right now. I'm going to say it. I think stuff's going on right now in the spirit world the devil's nervous about. I think there are potential explosions. I think there's all kind of multicultural revival getting ready to come back in this church like never before. And the devil knows it and God knows it. And we're in the middle going, I don't see nothing. Can't see it, Lord. It's not about what you see. It's about where you step. But I can't see it happening, God. It's not about what you see happening right now. It's about you just obeying my word and keep walking. But I don't know what I might walk into. Just keep walking. 
we could have an explosion this weekend. People getting the Holy Ghost, people getting baptized, miracles, signs, and wonders. We can have it. I know this is going to shock some of y'all. We can have absolute explosive church where anything happens. We're blind. I said it last night. I'm just going to say it again. I believe God can heal. I know what this church has been through. I'm not dumb. I still believe God can heal. I'm like, no, that was not good enough. I said, I still believe God can heal. I still believe God can heal cancer. I still believe, yes, I, yes, he can. I know you've suffered and I know you've been through pain, but God can, God can do something still. Last time I checked, he's still in control. He's still on the throne. His will can be done. It may not happen before, but it can happen now. What could God do? I feel the Holy Ghost trying to stir up something right now. A level of faith that used to be here that the devil tried to steal. But God said, if you'll just obey me and trust me one more time, I can raise up something. Let's all stand. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You need a miracle, raise your hand. Maybe you don't think you need one. But maybe there's a family member right now you can think of right this second. I feel a burden getting on me right now. I feel a burden. I feel deep faith that's, that's way, it's buried beneath pain and scars and worry and past. And that faith is like a heartbeat right now. And it's starting to beat. And you can feel it. That voice saying, come on, trust me. Come on, believe me. Come on, give me one more chance. Come on, let me tell you what to do. Come on, come up here for prayer. Come on, let me touch your knee. Come on, let me fix the situation. Let me fill you with the Holy Ghost. Let me put my spirit in you. Let me have a chance. You're in the middle of a miracle. I could tell you stories all night that would build your faith to give you the confidence to move and say, okay, now I'm ready to step. Anybody can believe when they see, but you know what Jesus said? Blessed is he that believeth when he can't see. In other words, when you don't when you come up to the altar tonight and you can't see God doing it, can't see God saving them, can't see them, the preacher says, see them in the altar talking in tongues and you can't see it. Can't see the healing, can't see the miracle. Come up anyway and walk toward the pool and raise your hands. Say, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And I wonder what God could start tonight that would continue tomorrow on your job. I preach this one time, one time, and after I preached it, miracles were being reported. Why? Because people will move when they cannot see will stir up the power of God. I want you to get the miracle on your mind that you need right now. If it's physical healing, this is going to sound crazy, but just, just, just obey the Lord tonight. If it's physical healing, I want you to stand on this side of the pulpit tonight when you come up here. Physical healing. Anything else, that side. And we're going to pray. Well, we're not used to this kind of stuff. This is Thursday night. Miracles want to happen in here. I can feel the Lord saying, I can still do it. I can do it. 
I can do it. Who will believe me? I can do it. I know you're hurting, but can you believe me right now? Can you believe me right now? That you're in the middle of one when you can't see it. We're about to find out. We're about to find out. Physical healing. I want you to come up here right now on this side of the altar. Physical healing in your body. Spiritual, financial, family, whatever. If you got both, stand anywhere. But I want you to come on this side. We're going to pray in a second. And God's going to begin to move. I'm telling you, God will heal people tonight. That's the power of the Lord. He, he can do anything. He is God. He's God. Make plenty of room. What's the baby's name? Devin? Heaven? Here's what we're going to do. Ready? A little test of faith. You're going to raise your hands and you're going to worship God. And you're going to praise God for the miracle. All that stuff's going to happen. We're going to pray the prayer of faith, all that. Before we do, we're all going to repent right now. We're all going to repent. Why? We're going to let him spit on the dirt. We're going to make sure the dirt's dealt with. Is this all right? Is this all right, Bishop? Okay. I want you to pray with me right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed, every mouth open. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for every thought, every word, every action, every sin of my heart, every sin of my mind, every sin of my eyes, every sin of my mouth, every sin in my ears, every sin of my past, every emotional sin, every physical sin, every spiritual sin, every financial sin. I repent of all of my sins. I wish you'd pray that right now with all of your heart. I repent of all of my sins, Jesus. Mean it, mean it, mean it. I repent of everything. Forgive me, I pray. In Jesus' name. Now get your faith out right now. Whatever faith you have, it might be this small as a grain of a mustard seed. It may be almost invisible. You may think you've got no faith left. But get whatever faith you can out. Get whatever faith you can in God. I know I'm, I'm asking some of you to, 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 to raise a faith that you have. I know you're hurting. I know you're suffering. We're going to pray the prayer of faith. We're going to pray for physical healing. We're going to pray for all things right now. I'm going to lay hands on as many people as I can. But don't wait on the preacher to pray for you. Your own faith will bring your own miracle. It's not any person's hand touching you. It's your faith that will bring the power of God down right now. Get your faith out right now. Get the highest level of worship out right now. When we feel released, we're going to pray. Okay, now raise your hands. After I pray, I want you to continue praying until God touches you. Some of you will probably be healed instantly. Just keep worshiping God. By the authority of the Word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus, his name might be exalted. His kingdom might be glorified. You said by your stripes we were healed. You said you're Jehovah Jireh provider. You said you could save anything. You said the promises for us and to our children, all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let there be miracles right now, I pray, across this altar. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ from head to toe right now, I pray. In
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let every pain inside be gone right now. In the name of the Lord, let there be miracles, I pray. I want you to open your mouth right now and begin to call on the name of Jesus. Open your mouth right now and begin to call on the name of God right now. Every pain gone in the name of the Lord. Every pain go away right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There we go. There we go. God healer right now. You can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think. All pain leave this body in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands toward this baby named Heaven right now. She has MS. And it's in her legs. God, I pray for this baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we've got to have faith. God, touch this baby right now. You said that come as a little child unto you. you got to... I'm going to pray until something happens. I'm going to pray and believe God. Here you go. When your pain leaves, just start worshiping God. When God starts moving on your body, just start worshiping. If you don't know what God's doing in your situation right now, just let the anointing touch you. Let the anointing run down your head. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. He anointed him. He anointed him. Let God touch you right now as we begin to move deeper. pain gone in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now every pain go away right now Jesus name in Jesus name from head to toe right now in Jesus name Lord you can do anything you can do anything right now you can do anything right now. Let pain begin to leave this altar. Arthritis, leave this building in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Arthritis, leave this building right now in the name of the Lord. Every pain, every fear, every doubt, every worry. Jesus, from head to toe, God, I pray. Where is your faith? Where is my faith at? We're just getting started. We're just getting started. We're just getting started. Well, he hasn't touched me yet. Keep stepping. Keep stepping. Keep stepping. Keep walking. Keep believing. Things are going on right now. We love all Jesus name I in Jesus name in Jesus name why don't you put your hands on somebody beside you right now I can't reach everybody but I'm gonna try but you put your hands on somebody beside you right now put your hands on somebody and as your faith gets higher and as the pain leaves begin to worship God as you lay your hands on them let God touch them through you right now I know some of you I challenged you a little bit tonight I'm not trying to get on your case I'm trying to stir your faith that you need to continue in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, heal God right now. In the name of Heal. 
as only you can do right now, God, I pray. Somebody talk to Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Talk to Jesus, buddy. I love you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. What could God do for you right now? What? Oh, God. In the name of the Lord, in Jesus' name, what could God heal right now? human can do it but God can do anything God can do anything God can do anything God can do anything right now in Jesus name from head to toe complete healing right now now this will be miracle night there will be miracles from this altar call you will see there will be miracles from this altar call right here pain be gone pain be gone in jesus name right now in jesus name right now in jesus name some of you have no clue if god's touching your situation outside these walls you're just not a healing you need. It's something beyond that. You have no clue if God's doing it. But your faith says, I'm willing to believe that God's doing it right now. You're going to raise your hands right now. I'm going to pray. We're going to pray for God to dispatch angels right now to every situation. And your job, in your marriage, with your kids, with your family, whatever it is. God knows every detail. Don't worry about what you see and don't see. What you hear and don't hear. Just receive the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, I know that you have all power and all authority and all dominion. And I know you can do anything. And I know you can heal anybody. And I know you can touch any marriage, any financial state, any child, any lost loved one, any attack mentally. I know you can. And I pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus that you would sing. Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. I know this may not make a lot of sense to some of you. But I just feel like telling you what I'm hearing in my mind. Tonight I will take your wounds and turn them into scars. It's not that you will not remember, it's that it will not hurt as bad. I don't know who that or what that means, 
But whatever pain you're not letting go of, emotionally, God's going to close it up right now. Can you feel the Holy Ghost in here right now? I want you to reach up. This is, I'm just about done. Can you reach up right now and j- just talk to Jesus? I don't know what you have to say to Him, but maybe a thank you or maybe an I love you and from your heart. I mean, maybe something from the depth of your soul. Something from the depth that says only you can do what you're doing right now. I'm not going on what I see or what I feel. I'm going on what the Word said. I'm taking one more step right now. I'm in the middle of a miracle. I'm in the middle of a miracle. I'm in the... God, heal her in Jesus' name. Heal her in Jesus' name. Heal her body, I pray, in Jesus' name. I'm in the middle of a miracle. I'm in the middle of a miracle. I want you to start saying it right now. I'm in the middle of a miracle. 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 Every teenager, raise your hand right now. Every teenager, raise your hands in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for authority and power and dominion over every attack you're going through nobody knows about. Mentally, emotionally, at school, when you're by yourself, when you're with your friends, I pray right now for power. I pray for angels. I pray for the Spirit of God to get all over you and direct you and lead you right now. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for strength like you've never had before. I pray for a protection like you've never had before. I pray for an anointing like you've never had before. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ pain leaving pain leaving in Jesus name in Jesus second type of prayer is a current prayer he said a current prayer is the second type of prayer that God answers. It's, it's a situation that you do not have, you don't have a long time for God to do this. You need God to do it now. Does that make sense? Yeah, you, you can have a lost loved one. You can, that's a memorial thing. You just pray until God does something. But you could have a situation where you need God to intervene now. And when you have that type of prayer, memorial prayer is not what you need. You can't just go bring the name up or bring the situation up in passing and say, God, I'm making another payment on this. I need you to come through. When the situation is desperate, it requires desperation in your prayers. A current prayer. You can't come with a situation, Brother Grant, that's tragic and real and severe and come to God and give God a, you know, Lord, what we're going through right now. And I need you to come through because the deadline is this week and we have to answer. We need some peace. We need a miracle and walk out. That's, there's no desperation there. You're giving God the right facts, but you're not giving God the heart behind the facts. You're showing God, I'm really not serious about this. Because a current prayer requires desperation. It requires you to be, I need an answer now. I don't have 60 years to pray about this. We need a miracle in our house. That is desperation. That's a current prayer. And a current prayer, God will hear. And I want to show you something. That, that the Lord answers prayers while you're praying them. I know that we've got God in this box that if I pray today, he can come through by Thursday or he can come through by tomorrow. He can come through by next month. But actually God, the Bible said, I can hear you before you and say what you're going to say. In fact, I need Jesus. I know what you're saying before you even ask.